Hi, welcome to our channel. I'm Corinne from the Grace Note Stitchers. Uh, my daughter Colleen is usually with me, um, but she's behind the camera right now because I'm going to do something a little different. This is not typical floss tube. Um, there's a lot of times new stitchers will ask, how do you put the floss onto bobbins? So I thought, why not show you? Because I am bobbinating a lot of threads right now. Um, so you need a couple things. You need your floss. You need cards. You can get cardboard or plastic. It doesn't matter. Um, and then if you're using plastic, Sharpie doesn't do so well like that. It doesn't, it does come off after a while. Um, but DMC makes numbers that you can put on here. Uh, there's no right or wrong way of where to put your stickers. I put all of mine over here because then when I'm looking for them, they're all in the same place. But there are people who put them here. Um, if you have cardboard, you can write them in, in pen. You can use Sharpie. Um, just use something that's not going to rub off onto your threads. So bobbin, these are no names. These are not DMC. I got 300 for $10 on Amazon. This floss is um, CXC. It's got the um, numbers of DMC. There's people who think DMC is tangly. This is extremely tangly. So I'm going to show you how to do it without getting all tangled up. Um, you, I use the same technique for DMC and one extra step for this, for the CXC. Um, DMC has those pla those numbers. I bought these off of Etsy. I'm so sorry. That is my dog who's going to come join me. Um, this is, I got off of Etsy. I got a rose color for my, it's called rose gold actually, for my DMC and then purple for CXC. And what's really cool, if you look up here in the corner, they actually wrote CXC and then my DMC says DMC. So kind of cool that you're not going to mix them up. Um, so um, I want to start with 3832. So these are pre-printed. And again, you can also print your own. There is no right and wrong with this. Um, I do the slickier side because the other side tends, it's a, I don't know, it's matte and it doesn't stick. Um, so I take the number off after, that way I don't mix them up. And then I find, this is the part that I do with both of them, but I find that with um, CXC, it's better to uh, find the center before you unhook the other side. Because if you do it afterwards, um, you're gonna have a tangled mess. And this one I can tell you is not gonna come off very smoothly. I can already see that. Okay, so then I pull this off. You can see that it is not 100% uh, even. Hopefully my next one will come off a whole lot better. Um, I don't mind bobbinating. There are people who will bobbinate for you, you know, for a slight charge. Um, if you don't like doing this, go for it. I also, um, so I put one tab through. I used to go through the other one. It does not matter. I find it holds just as well. And then I try to go nice and smooth for my first row. Um, my daughter actually will stay nice and even. Don't pull too tight. That's how you get the harsh kinks. You'll get little kinks, but not really harsh kinks. Um, my daughter will do this nice smooth throughout the whole time. So if you look at all of her bobbins, oh my goodness, even when you're um, using them, they stay all nice and pretty. I will show you, I'm not as neat as her. Um, so then, yeah, I will take this through. So I'm showing you the troublesome kind before I show you the um, how smooth it can come off. But I could tell that this was actually tangled in the inside of the wrapper, which is a shame, but it does happen. And again, it happens more with the CXC than it does with DMC. So now I, I will also come back the other way. So I have two neat rows. And that's just to help it. If it's too fat and too thick, I find it doesn't um, line up in my bobbin box as well. Um, Colleen, while I'm doing this, can you grab me one of my bobbin boxes up behind you? Um, one of the blue ones there, the third blue one. And then I go fast, left, that one right there. Yep, I'll show you how I store them then. These boxes are like two, three dollars from Hobby Lobby. I used to use 40% off coupons. Hmm, can't do that anymore. So I can just go fast. There are uh, floss winders, but your hand is still doing the same motion. Um, you would just uh, put the little bobbin thing, um, the winder. This is actually coming off a lot smoother than I thought. 
So it's just wrapped around my wrist. It was just that beginning. And see, I don't have any tangles. So I do not unwrap this whole thing and then, and then you end it like that. So um, I'm going to put them over there. This is how I normally store my DMC. Or this is when I have it ready for a project. This isn't like total storage. So this is for a project I'm working on already. And it's got my DMC in it with my rose gold labels. Um, so I have them in number order. I do not put them by color because my pattern has the numbers. So when you look at your pattern, this is not the pattern for it, but I can show you. Like the symbols are here with the numbers. So I'm not gonna go by color digging when I can just very easily say, oh wait, it called for 779. Oh, there it is. Um, so that's how I score for each project. I'll do one more when it doesn't look so tangly. Um, 38, 21. These labels are a little different because it's like in two sheets before it goes back to the new row. So I put my number on. Okay, I can kind of see already where my, yay, this one's gonna come off nice and easy. I have it good in my loop. And um, I'm finding I can start at either end. I don't have to find one specific end with this. Some people with the DMC, um, or even no named, say that there's one end that's better than another. And I don't know if that's just when they're like pulling it out and then winding it, but I find if I put my wrist through it, I don't have any problems. And yeah, I do kind of help it off. That's what the flicking of my wrist is. Is like, I've, I've used everything I can, so I just loosen some more. It's not a strange uh, quirk or something that I have. Um, yeah, I missed one. So I'm just going through here. Yeah, and I do this in the car. I do this while watching TV. Um, I did some at my parents' house. Because, as you can tell, I'm talking while winding. Sorry, my glasses are sliding. Um, so... And I just try to keep it kind of even that one side's not puffier than another because again, to lay nicely in my box if they were really fat in the center. So I just go left to right, right to left, going back and forth. So I hope you found this little tutorial video helpful if you've never wound floss before. Um, there are tons of different ways um, that you can store floss. Um, so this is just bobbinating. There are other ways to store your floss. There are stitch bows made by DMC. Um, you would have to look those up. I've never used them, um, but you basically just undo your skein and slip it over the bow. Um, Annie's keepers are something that I find fascinating, but because I've bobbinated so much, that would really be hard for me to transfer my stuff over even slowly. Um, but Annie's keepers are basically hanging in a loop. Usually you cut your threads first and then you hang them in a loop. Um, but there's tons of tutorials out there. Um, Craft Addict K has one and so does um, Teresa Little Stitcher. Uh, I've seen both of theirs and they're phenomenal and they definitely describe how to use Annie's Keepers. Um, they're a little pricier, but I think so worth it if that's the st way that you want to go. Um, this is probably your cheapest method because this is like a $3 box. And again, you get 300 of these for $10. Um, now I paid like $4.50 for my stickers. I think the DMC stickers are $2.99. Um, or again, take Sharpie or print your own stickers. Um, so anyway, I hope this helped you. Bye.